a there must be a reason that Final Fantasy X-2 decided to demote Lulu and create a new character that looks very similar to her, Pain. She's goth, she's monotone, she has a past that is traumatic. In this video, let's talk about how Pain and Lulu are similar characters, then let's talk about how they're dissimilar, and then in the end, we're going to talk about the developers and what they had to say about Lulu. First, let's start with the similarities. Lulu and Pain share a similar backstory. They have a serious role to play in the fight against Sin, and they have both suffered through trauma that has caused them to be withdrawn and secretive. Lulu has gone through multiple losses in her life. First, she has been orphaned. She has lost both of her parents to sin. Second, she was the sole guardian to Lady Ginnam. She died on the pilgrimage and Lulu was unable to protect her. Finally, Lulu lost her lover, Chapu. Lulu's arc is that she took up the guardian role to assist Yuna, seeing Yuna like a little sister. She didn't want to see anyone die outside of her control again. Her choice to be Yuna's guardian was her way of protecting herself from loss. As a result of Lulu's trauma, she is withdrawn. She doesn't warm up to the main character Titus for a long time. She is also very harsh with Waka. Lulu has decided that she must be a rational person. She plays her cards close to the chest. She never says too much about how she feels, if anything at all. Pain has also experienced similar losses. As the recorder for the Crimson Squad, she witnessed the entire squad get annihilated except for her, Gipple, Barilai, and Nuge. The events of this mysterious massacre are a major plot point for Final Fantasy X-2, and it's the reason Pain is silently looking for answers. Pain also believes in keeping things quiet. She is very serious, and she doesn't giggle along with the other girls. Pain also takes a very long time to warm up to Yuna and Riku, just as Lulu takes a long time to warm up to Titus. Also in similarities, they're both kind of goth. They both wear black, they both have a lot of metal in their outfits, and they both have belt buckles. It's hard to get a read on both of them, it's hard to tell what they're feeling. In these aspects, you would think that because they already have a Lulu, why would they make a pain in Final Fantasy X too? Well, as it turns out, there are also dissimilarities between the two. Lulu is a uh, very feminine in her appearance. She is very bogged down by her skirt and by all of her belts. She is quite busty and feminine. Yuna and Riku are very girly characters, and I think that they wanted to offset that with Pain, who has a little bit more of a masculine look. She's wearing pants, and she is also bearing the sword, which is probably important to balance out the team. Pain actually shares some similarities to Orin. One example is the warrior class. Pain's original dress sphere starts as a warrior, which is a standard damage dealer with debuff abilities. Pain's original class has moves like armor break, which are moves that Orin also has. In contrast, Lulu is a standard black mage. She deals damage with black magic and she does no damage with a sword at all. Also, more like Orin than Lulu, Pain is quietly pulling the strings in the main storyline. Everything that is happening around Vegna Gun and the Crimson Squad is related to Pain's past. Pain is being tight-lipped, but she somehow seems to be stumbling on all of the Crimson Spheres with the main party, and they happen to be unraveling her story, much like we're unraveling Orin's story while he's not saying anything in Final Fantasy X. Being a Sphere Hunter is a part of a secret mission for Pain. Whereas for Lulu, her motivations for being there is coming from the heart. She wants to protect Yuna. She sees Yuna as a little sister. More similar to Orin, Pain is looking out more for herself than for the party, whereas Lulu is looking out more for the party than for herself. That is why Lulu quickly volunteered herself to sacrifice herself for sin when they went up to Unaleska. So to be clear, their character motivations are different and their relationship to Yuna is very different. And that is the key pieces to why Lulu is not the third character in Final Fantasy X too. Now here is for the juicy stuff. 
what the actual director had to say about cutting Lulu out as a main protagonist. There is a 2004 interview where Matomu Toriyama answers this question. The question asked to the director was this, Seeing as you were going to have three female playable characters, why wasn't Lulu included in the trio? The director answered, The reason Lulu was relegated to a supporting role in Final Fantasy X-2 was that if she had been in the party, Yuna would have relied on her like an older sister, and this would have gotten the way of her quest to find a new self, which, as mentioned previously, is what drives the story of the sequel. Also, as far as Lulu is concerned, two years have passed since the events of Final Fantasy X, and she is currently enjoying married life back in Besaid with Waka. So she has no reason to go off adventuring like in the olden days. For fans of Lulu and Waka, they can be visited in Besaid at any point in the game, so please enjoy their company as often as you like. In Final Fantasy X-2, Lulu is in a relationship with Waka, and she is pregnant even though she doesn't look it. Lulu is an older character than the trio. She sees Yuna as a little sister. That's why it makes sense in the events of Final Fantasy X-2 for Lulu to have a more settled life than Yuna. Yuna is a lot more restless and she's finding herself in the game. This is what Matomu Toriyama had to say about that. In Final Fantasy X, Yuna was burdened with the huge responsibility of being the High Summoner and, in the two years since the story ended, has been searching for a new role for herself. Thanks to Riku's influence, she is able to begin to find her new self. Since the expression of her new self begins with changes in fashion and the way she speaks in a way, she could be seen as a completely different person, but deep in her heart, she is the same old Yuna. It is this realization of a stronger or more confident woman inside herself that drives the story of Final Fantasy X too. Drives, I think, is the key word in this. Yuna is searching for a new role for herself in Spira. And in that, Yuna needs to be free from the mother figure, which is what Lulu is. I think it's kind of unfortunate that they had to borrow so much from Lulu's model. I felt like they could have done a little bit more with Pain to make her interesting. She also doesn't seem fully fleshed out. She doesn't have much of a backstory beyond the Crimson Squad. So really, at the beginning of the video, I should have been stomping on Pain's face instead. So what do you think about Pain in Final Fantasy X-2? Let me know in the comments. Also, I must remind you that I stream, and I would love it if you joined my stream. You can find the link in the description. Until next time, bye!